Hey, greetings YouTube, Performance Reviews here. We're going to talk about uh, Milo Power Nozzles, in particular the 236-234. The 234 was the one that came with the pigtail adapter, but they both look the same. Um, I have both generations here. We have, if you can see in there, we have a fluorescent light version and an LED version. So that will hopefully uh, kind of show you the only real differences between that. Uh, and the LED version is slightly lighter than the uh, fluorescent version. These uh, power heads are really good. They're low profile. They have a bumper. They're meant to go a long time without service. Uh, I, I typically see them every two to four years, I say, bring these in for service. Uh, of course, that varies depending on use. It's a pretty tough little power head. For some reason, a lot of uh, non-authorized Mila dealers are intimidated by this. Again, if you're an authorized Mila dealer, this is an everyday routine for you. Though this has been replaced largely by the uh, newer 228. So one thing that's common is you cannot push the handle release. You notice this one, the handle release works. And what that comes down from is somebody wasn't pushing the handle release and they were forcing it and they break a piece in there. So I'm gonna show you how to get in there. So we're gonna open these up, up and see what they look like. We're gonna go with the older one first here. Uh, as you can see, the brush roller has plenty of life, but it's kind of hard to turn. So let's see what's inside here. And if you're trying to do this at home, this is the time when I'm gonna tell you to bring it to the authorized dealer. This video is kind of more to show you why you don't want to do it yourself. Um, again, if you ignore that lesson and you want to go do it yourself, it's a free country, uh, but I'm not liable. And this power nozzle is exclusive to Milo. I am not aware of seeing this exact same power head on any other vacuum. They made ones like it. Um, there were similar ones like it, like an EBK 340 found on this beam. Uh, but as you can see, it's slightly different. And these were all made by uh, Visselwerk. And Visselwerk is a high-end German manufacturer of vacuum cleaner parts, accessories. But their specialty is floor nozzles. And pull that apart. All right. So this has sandwich construction. That's one of the reasons why it's so strong. Pull the pedals off. Like so. Really simple. Uh, really nothing to go wrong in there. So now we are at be fluorescent and I'm going to show you how I work on it and I face it. So the first thing I like to do, pull the springs apart, set them aside. Next we're going to grab our central vacuum and if you are a back shop and you don't have a central vacuum, you are missing out. This speeds up repairs but and again, also the most powerful vacuum so a lot of reasons why you want this but that shows you that. So and super old ones, this piece did not uh, come off by itself and that, that can make things complicated. The really old ones, but again this one's not that old. It's like a 2009 maybe. Alright, so unless you're going to break it down and completely wash it, do not open that up. And at this point if you were to try and turn it on, there's actually a kill switch built in and it's not going to turn on. So just pull on these little tabs, tilt the head, and everything just comes off. Now. We can see where somebody vacuumed up something very wet and blocked the machine. Just gonna pull that out. Um, you can also see that the brush roller bearings are pretty well intact. And the belt's intact, but there's some stuff in the belt chamber. So one of the things that happens over time and why it needs to be serviced is on some of the previous models, they actually had like this little filter where the vacuum would self vacuum out the chamber. This one's supposed to do that through this little thing for whatever reason on this model, it never really worked all that great in terms of its self-cleaning. So I, I recommend you get the thing serviced by a professional where they clean and lubricate the brush roller, the height adjustment. Sometimes this needs a dab of grease. Sometimes the motor needs lube. Now the belt on this, probably never going to break. I've seen maybe one or two over the years. This is designed to be a lifetime belt and last the lifetime of the roller. In a typical brush roller life on this is 10 plus years. So that's really nice. Again, this is 2009. It's got a nice long brush roller. Uh, that looks. This one's probably five years newer, and they're the same length. So real heavy duty. And when you pick this up, this resin-filled composite that they use, super tough. Um, so I'm going to pull this off for a second, and I'm going to story time on this piece right here. So this is the machine is hard to tilt back. Either stuff is debris has gotten in here. Or this thing has snapped in half. And for some reason, this one's clear plastic, even though you can't see it from the outside. So that's a particular touch. There are two felt gaskets here that need to be cleaned off, and they can be pulled out and actually rotated on the other side to 
help freshen them if the machine hasn't been serviced in a while. There is a micro switch here. This is the same micro switch that's been used forever on just about everything. This is commercially available. You don't actually have to get this part from Mila uh, if you don't want to. Everything else is pretty proprietary. This light bulb, this frosted light bulb is extremely hard to find. And there is a starter right here. Uh, these are pretty common. The bulb is not. So th those are some components of this that make this a little weird. Uh, and like I said, there's a kill switch in there. Now this also separates in here. You can see this is all gritty and this is full of schmutz. This needs to be cleaned out. Uh, pull the washer and there's a spring. Set to the side. And oh, there you go. See all that. So uh, this wedge is extremely important and would carry on to the S7. Uh, so when we tension the motor, you actually use this wedge to tension the motor. This wedge is again really important to this design. It's one of the things that will make one of these loud or quiet, and it's how you know if it was serviced right. I'm not giving away all the little secrets here, but that's kind of an important little detail of the machine. There's one more spring under here, and now we're going to vacuum everything out again. I just wanted to show the difference between the LED version and the non-LED version. Uh, you can see that the board appears to be the same. Grab the board. Uh, it appears to be exactly the same. It's hard to tell the difference uh, between those right there. Um, literally they have an LED panel that somehow plugs in and is self-contained there. Uh, this is the one where the height adjustment, I mean the pedal release was sticky. Notice I can move it now. Uh, there was a ton of stuff in here keeping this. And you can hear it's kind of gritty. Uh, so that's just dirty and needs to be cleaned out. All right, here's the third example. You notice this won't go down even after I hit the lever. Um, so that is definitely broken in there. When I pull this apart, I'll show you what that looks like. All right, got all that. You can also see this is one with a ballast. So what has happened is, yep, this little guy has broken off in multiple pieces. Let's pull them out. If he will even come out. This guy's really there. Uh, wow, that one's gotten kind of, you can always hit him from the back side if need be. Headphone warning. And you can see pieces that broke where somebody had forced it. It's a shame. So this has taken a trip through my dishwasher and it's time to put all this back together. And I want to talk a little bit about some of these things. A lot of people have trouble putting this back together for some reason, and I've never understood it. It's a very simple power head. And once you've done a couple of them, it becomes even simpler in your head. Now, if you're not an authorized service center, or you're somebody at home trying to do this, you should have not done this. You should have brought this to your authorized dealer. So that being said, the first thing I'm gonna do is pull the little felt out and just flip it. This kind of refreshes the felt um, without having to change it because it's not a part that's available by itself. So that's a little thing I'm gonna do. Again, we're gonna check this guy right here. And something I like to do you don't want to overdo it, but just a little bit of grease on that lock can make things go a lot smoother for your customer in the future. So let's put the uh, neck in place. And the neck did not go in the dishwasher. I actually uh, took the neck and just kind of set it aside. I don't like it. Yeah, my big monkey hands keep doing that. All right. So you're going to see that there is a section here with these little ribs on it. And you're going to take your number four screwdriver and you want to just put these back where they go. And you notice there's a lot of slack there, and that is definitely intentional, so that there's plenty of room for that to move around. So we're just gonna push that into its little section. There's no reason to put any tape, glue, or anything like that. Um, I often see these that have been opened by somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, and they've, for some reason, put tape or crap in there, and it, that just cruds everything up, makes it worse. Um, I'm just gonna set the motor here for now. And uh, get a good, there's a good shot of what the wiring looks like right here. And we're going to put, again, the leads are all pretty short on this. We are going to just plug everything in to the kill switch. You know, talk about things that were not necessary to put in this power head. This kill switch was completely unnecessary, but that's part of the reason why when somebody doesn't know what they're doing, they put the, try to put this back together and it doesn't work. They freak out because uh, there's a kill switch in it. And there's that. I'm just pushing that. You see that wire is in its place. Um, so that's what that looks like. You can get a good shot of that. Uh, and then this cover goes on it. Now, unless you're taking everything apart to wash it, there's no reason to ever remove this piece. So that's a little pro tip. The next thing I'm going to show you is 
I'm going to just show you the LED version and how everything is wired. Much the same down here, but just, just to show you in case somebody decides to unplug or mess with the LED version uh, on there. So now we're going to start putting everything back together. We're going to set this actually upside down, like so. And we're going to start telling the motor wires where to go. And again, you want to look for the pieces that have already been depressed uh, by little wire holders here. And if you pinch one of these wires, um, that's going to suck. These are not uh, these are not stranded wires. These are solid wires. That makes sense to anybody who's dealt or pulled wire or anything. They're going to know what that means, uh, which means basically they're less flexible. So next up, they cross, and this one go white one goes under here. Now I'm going to put this in there like so, and then we're going to put the corresponding screw in there. Now we're wired up, you know, we don't have to worry about any of that for a minute. Um, let's see which one of these belts is better. Uh, for those watching at home, I basically took uh, three power nozzles to make one, in case you're wondering what I'm doing. So I like to soak the belts, and a little, coat, a little bit of soap quiets things up, makes things a little bit easier. Now I want to talk about lubrication because that is a problem with this nozzle. I have a motor right here, and you see it won't turn. Uh, and that's because the hair got in there and it didn't come in for service. So when I say every two to four years, bring this damn thing in for service, do it. Don't mess around. Somebody needs to get in there and lubricate it, otherwise the motor's going to get seized. Now, for a lot of people, these power heads are cheap enough that they don't care if the motor seizes, they'll just replace it. Um, but for the average Joe, or somebody who's just trying not to waste a whole bunch, now you see a little bit of oil, a triflow, all that just spins like it's supposed to. So that motor's actually good. Um, and as that, we, we'll clean the hair off this later, but that's how to free up a motor in case uh, anybody's wanting to do that. So this has already been lubricated properly and taken care of. And normally you don't mix grease and oil together. That, that seems to be like the theme of this power head. Um, the brushes don't wear out easily. And if they do, the brush roller actually comes with this blue part in the black base. So it's really designed to last the life of a machine. So there's a couple things we're gonna do. A Q-tip will be your friend for this. You just wanna clean this out, make sure there's nothing in there and you just want to clean that. There's something I didn't used to be so concerned about until I realized what they are. These right here are bearing coolers, so just make sure you blow those clear with compressed air or whatever your method is, just make sure they're clear. That's essential to keeping the bearings cool. Next, I'm just going to keep it inside of that. So on a nozzle that is four, five, six plus years old, not one or two or three years old, but an older nozzle that's had time to wear, with these sleeve bearings, something will quiet it down a little bit. So a little bit of the material has gone in these sleeve bearings because it's steel and copper and that's by design. So putting just a tad, just a tad bit of grease makes a big difference in terms of quieting it down. And of course, then you want to give it a healthy dose of light machine oil. You probably could use some differential oil just in lieu of doing this nonsense, but this is what I have and this is what I'm going to do. Also, differential oil smells real bad if anybody's ever worked in cars. So, all that. So even though this brush roller has had a ton of stuff wrapped around it and it's trash, whatever, this one that's almost half its age is about the same. So no reason to replace that. It's still very functional despite its looks. I'm gonna put all this in. And this is a, this brush roller only goes in there one way. The, uh, it doesn't have rotating end caps or anything like that. Now, putting the rest of this together, let's talk about this, because this is an important piece, and anybody who's worked on any other Milos knows that without this, this whole thing is pretty much fucked. Um, I'll put that in. And this you're gonna do by hand. I'm gonna explain to you how to do this. So we're going to put these screws in, and we're going to do it kind of loose. Not super tight, not super loose, just a little bit loose, just enough, like so. And what we're going to do, and that is now touching the belt, now we're going to tighten those. And if you do this with a drill, it's real easy to break this little thing, so keep that in mind. Now these two pieces are exactly the same on the upright if you do happen to do it, those are available. So let's talk about some of the other gizmos in this head. The height adjustment must be addressed at this moment. And it's important that this is clean and all this is clean. This one took a trip in the dishwasher and this naturally would come with some grease in it. Again, because I took a trip in my dishwasher, it's really lacking of grease. And we're just gonna, crap. You don't wanna saturate this with grease, but a little bit of grease in here makes all the difference on that. Plain grease. Uh, also, if this thing is sticking, this is dirty. That's, that's just a symptom of that being super dirty. Um, 
next we are going to put the spring in and the spring goes down like that and that's on there like that and now we are missing a piece i just noticed there it is so this thing you can see it's gunked up and dirty so we're just going to clean that uh with this plated steel i'm not going to put this through a dishwasher you can wash it out in the sink but it, it that'll make it worse um if you have to if there's a lot of wear on this a little bit of steel wool just to pull up any burrs off makes a big difference with this now putting this all together you can see how this is going to interact in there like that interact with the like so so just a drop of oil on that makes that interact much better to uh i guess that's a double positive better together uh, pull a spring out there um, and you can see that if you hold this down, now the height adjustment is going to work just how it should. Right. So it's time to put the cover on, give the wires one last check in this case, upon working this one wire popped out. And that's what I think frustrates a lot of people is they don't know to check for all these little nuances. So as you put this back on, you're going to press the clear lever, just put that slightly down. Everything should just ease into place. There should be no gaps. It should just be super easy going into place. Next, you're going to take your two shorter screws right here. And these are going to go in and hold everything down. And this you can use a drill on. It's not going to hurt anything. All right, so those are all in place. Now, this is the time where I would just wipe off your light bulb. Again, if you have to find this light bulb, uh, it's camera focus. Good luck. These are really hard to find. So that's one of the things I like to take out of up here. I also order these light bulbs from Thistlework or from a third party distributor. I wouldn't order them from Mila. They're outrageously expensive if you order them directly from Mila. Um, and put the starter in over there. Excellent. So now everything should be good. In theory, the nozzle would turn on, right? Well, no, it won't. Because under here, we can see kill switch right here. There's a kill switch. Now you can use a screwdriver like this and edge it if you need to turn it on at this point. I don't recommend it. There's no real reason to do it if you've done everything right. If you're doubting your workmanship, again, you shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be in here to begin with. So we're gonna put the springs. One of them goes over that LED. The other one just goes right there. And let's see, it's one of these. There it is. This one is pretty beat up. What I like to do on the inside of this, Take a little bit of glass cleaner just to make sure. I like to just clean the lens on the inside. It makes things a little nicer. I'm going to make sure all the wires are where they should be. Uh, the little wire holders were broken off by somebody who didn't know what they were doing on this one, so that's Joyce. Um, and there is another little trick to putting these together. Let's grab not the set. Yeah. And that is sometimes things happen with these where notice that this will fall off because this is just why this is two pieces is like beyond me um but they are so <laughs> something i've been doing for years i do it pretty much to everyone so i take a drop of a couple drops of super glue and we're just putting them where it wedges itself in and when we put this on then this will be held in there and won't fall out again on the user so that's just a little trick I learned years ago and have been doing ever since. <laughs> this one may have already been done. Actually, I can see that there's some poly bond on this one from somebody. That's joyous. So now will be the time where I'm going to take that poly bond off. If there's anything on here, this is the time to do this before you put it back together. If you're wondering what kind of chemicals and stuff I use, I have a whole video of that up on my Patreon page. Um, excellent. So now we're going to put these in here. And this window, unfortunately, is a little scuffed. I don't think there's much I can do with that. Nah, it's just always going to be scuffed, unfortunately. Previous year. Previous owner was not super nice to this. He's on here. There's no reason to grease this or do anything else. This is fine just the way it is. Uh, make sure this is in the downward position at this point. 
So I'm going to hold these because otherwise they flop around. And I'm just going to push straight down on this. Then I'm going to flip this. Make sure that bumper is in place. Seems to be not. I'm going to do the big screws uh, first. And then with the front, I have found it just better to do these by hand. People tend to over tighten these with the screwdriver. All right. Next, I have the axle. I've got some, I put this in the dishwasher because it was Fuji. So I'm just real quick with steel wool and pull off any corrosion that occurred on that. The next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of tri-flow in, in this. That makes a huge difference in terms of the squeaking. And this is something I would do if you have one on the floor or um, on a demonstrator, put a little bit of tri-flow in here. It helps the parts wear in and it keeps it from squeaking. Um, some people put grease on this. I don't think that's necessary at all. Um, my two cents. So this piece is just going to hinge in there. And, oops, that was the wrong thing. There we go. Sorry, I've got multiple, multiple ones of these apart. And there we go. And that's as good as that's going to get. Um, so thanks for watching my uh, Mila SEB236234 repair video. Uh, and if this video helped you, please consider donating to our Patreon. Uh, even better yet, share this video on your favorite social media.